All right, everyone. So you can see the basic setup that I've got here. I have a small boiling flask there. It's a 250 ml boiling flask. There's 100 milliliters of toluene in there, 4.7 grams of iodine, and about 2.7 grams of ground antimony. And that's a slight excess of antimony. Um, it should be fine. I mean, I don't mind. We could recover it, but I doubt it's going to be worth it because the excess is, like I said, only slight. <clears throat> um, you can see I went ahead and put a calcium chloride drying tube on top of this to keep out all the moisture since the humidity around here is pretty high. Um, I dried out the flask and the um, column by um, rinsing them with acetone and then drying it thoroughly with the heat gun. Um, the calcium chloride in there is fresh. Um, I mean, the, the toluene was not pre-dried, so I mean, there is a little bit of water in there, but I don't think it's going to be a big problem. <clears throat> um, honestly, the protocol didn't say anything about going through, you know, steps this elaborate, but it's going to rain later today, and the humidity is pretty high here, so I'm just going to do this to make sure that I can get a semi-decent yield off of this. So, anyway... I will come back when there is something to see. All right, so I've learned one thing about this reaction, and that is do not prematurely turn down the heat, because if you do, the antimony triiodide will start crystallizing out on everything, like the stir bar there. I've turned the heat back up, and I'm trying to get it back to where it's refluxing again. It's getting there. But yeah, I didn't turn it down for very long, and I could already see it precipitating out, so... When it turns this color, well, uh, with that orangey-yellow color we had, it's done. <laughs> so I'm going to let this heat back up and hopefully all dissolve again. And then I'm going to try to decant this and see if we can get it to crystallize. Hydrolyze on me now. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, you take too much longer and, and you're just going to be out of luck. <laughs> no flask for you. Will you come on? Seriously. Hmm. Whoa. Hello. Okay. 
That wasn't good. All right. You can see we're already getting some very nice crystals there. have it y'all. Crystals of antimony triiodide. Look at that color. Right, one thing I wanted to point out is that it's actually very easy to just um, like take, you can take anything, um, and just stick it down in there and just scrape the crystals off the side of the flask in order to get everything down in the bottom. Um, you'll probably have to do this a couple times as it cools. Um, I guess you could wait to do it all at once. Um, I just don't like letting things build up through layers too thick because then it could start to harden up and... You know, I, I don't know that antimony triiodide specifically will do that, but I've had that happen way too many times. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, letting your apparatus cool down w without taking the glass stoppers out first. It's just not usually a good idea unless you want to, to be a real pain in the ass trying to get that shit back out of there again. So, yeah, generally it's a good rule of thumb to, you know, work with stuff while it's still kind of fresh and hasn't been sitting there forever but anyway you can see the powder that's already there as I stir it up at least I, I hope you can um, it's difficult to see through the solution but anyway or suspension rather um, I'm just gonna let this keep cooling down at this point I'll scrape off crystals as they crop up and as needed and then I will go ahead and filter it all and um, start trying to figure out what in the world I'm gonna do about drying the toluene without being able to put it under vacuum for prolonged periods of time. Okay, um, my master plan here is going to be to filter off the antimony triiodide crystals that we've got. And then, according to Wikipedia, the um, antimony triiodide is not soluble in chloroform. So what I'm going to try to do is, once the crystals are filtered off, I'm going to rinse them in chloroform and then try to dry them with hot air as quickly as possible. Um, chloroform will evaporate far more readily than toluene, so maybe I can dry them out this way um, without having to use vacuum. It's a bit of a long shot. But I'm going to give it a try. Let's do this shit. Okay. Hello, turn it the right way, retard. There we go. Really like to not splash any of this shit on me. That would probably be a bad thing. Antimony trihalides are pretty poisonous. But the alchemists sure did love playing around with that crap. Antimony trichloride. They used to leave it out so it could absorb water, because it's really hygroscopic. And then they would distill the water it had absorbed, thinking that the water had various occult properties depending on how it was collected, what time of year, what zodiac sign was ruling at the time, what, what the positions of the planets. Astrology figured very big into it. Some of their experiments are interesting. I mean, obviously, <clears throat> there's no such thing as magic water. Sorry. Doesn't matter when you collect it. Water is water. 
might have other shit in it. <laughs> but it's not magic water. Wouldn't that be cool if it was a... Yeah, this is a little thing I like to do where you just use the filtrate to keep rinsing stuff back down in there because you know it's not going to be soluble in the filtrate. But of course you should absolutely not look to me as your example for good lab practice. <laughs> not how I do things here anyway. At work, it's a different story, but here, meh, maybe not the best example. I don't know. I'm working under the assumption nitrile gloves will keep me safe, but since I do not know that, I like to change them kind of frequently. I'm 99% sure they work just fine, but so is Karen Betterhan. And then her brain turned to cheese. She absorbed some dimethyl mercury. And the prevailing wisdom at the time was that her gloves were sufficient protection. Yeah, not so much. Dimethyl mercury will go through just about everything but really heavy neoprene gloves. And I do have some very heavy neoprene gloves that apparently were designed by a sadist because they have no grip on anything at all. So anything you pick up, unless you use both hands and hold it, is guaranteed to just fly right out of your hands. And sometimes even if you hold it with both, I, mean, I swear to God, it's like somebody went out of their way to make a pair of gloves as slick as shit. I, I don't know what the motive was there, but there you have it. That's why you never see me use them. Plus, I haven't been working with anything that I think warrants that level of paranoia. Okay. He says right before he dies of antimony poisoning. Alright, I thought there was more than that. Seriously, what the fuck? Well, I guess that's not horrible. Considering I really just got Threw it together and let it go. Look at that jaw. Isn't that pretty? Alright, here we go, man. Here comes the chloroform test. I don't want to change these damn gloves again. Come on, baby, don't dissolve. See, this stuff is soluble in dichloromethane, but not in chloroform or carbon tet. Again, according to Wikipedia. Uh, I've found that Wikipedia is very frequently correct when it comes to this kind of stuff, but it's not infallible. Although in this case it looks like it's pretty good. Let's hit it one more time, I can still smell some toluene coming off this thing specifically. Alright, well, that part seems to have worked out okay. Alright, time for a glove change. Yes, it gets expensive going through gloves like this, but the way I look at it, it's a hell of a lot cheaper than having cancer. As somebody who's already had cancer, I can tell you, it's really not fun, although the drugs are great. 
They're just, hey, you got to find any silver lining you can possibly get your happy little ass on, and you've got cancer. There goes nothing, peeps. Let's see what we get. I'll tell you what we might get. It would be something to spread that out with. That might be better. Yeah, that's right, dude. It's so going to dry out in great big clumps like that. I'm so smart. Wow, I'll be damned. It looks like it's working. Son of a bitch. I'm sure it's not as good as what you would get doing it under vacuum the correct way, but it is working. Okay, you can turn off now. Would you look at that? I have to start worrying about dust here before too long. I can't believe that worked out so well. Look at those crystals, those are gorgeous! Okay. Either they're getting really glittery, which actually they should do, or something's changing. No, I think they're just really sparkly. Would you look at that? Well, I'm sure you would if I could get it to focus. The way they sparkle. That is so beautiful. Alright, I'm getting that shit. Ta-da! Here, let's put it down here. You can see it better. Look at that! It sparkles. It's beautiful. It looks a lighter red on camera than it is in real life, though. Like, that is a much more vivid red. It's, it has kind of more of a rusty red color in real life. But, for whatever reason, the camera sees this as like a bright cherry red. That is cool as hell. Look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> so there you have it, people. Antimony triiodide. That's cool as fuck. Well, if y'all like this, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Please comment. Tell me how awesome I am or how much I suck. If you think I've earned it, subscribe. And um, if you all don't mind, share some of these videos if you like them. That would be awesome. I would very much so appreciate that. So anyway, until the next video, y'all, we'll see you later.